In this module, uh, we'll talk about the proof of convergence for the perceptron learning algorithm that we saw in the previous module. Uh, so we have some faith and intuition that it actually works. We just need to formally prove it that it actually converges, right? So that's what we're going to do in this uh, module. So before that, a very uh, few very simple definitions. Uh, so if you have two sets of points P and N in an n-dimensional space, then we call say that these points are absolutely linearly separable if there exists some n plus 1 real numbers which are w0 to w1 n such that every point which belongs to p right p is the case where the output is 1 uh, then these set of weights satisfy this condition right and every point which lies in the negative set the set of weights satisfy this condition right so nothing very different from what we, has, we have been saying so far, it's just formally defining it, right. Now our proposition is that if the sets P and N are finite, right, there's a fixed number of points in that, which was the case in the toy example that we were doing and which will be the case in most examples that we do and linearly separable, right. The perceptron learning algorithm updates the weight vector, okay, before I go there, right, okay, let me not give you the definition and let me ask you the definition, right. So now given this definition the first definition and given this part of the proposition can you tell me what do I need to prove if I need to prove that the algorithm converges uh, okay that's one way of looking at it but what was happening in that uh, wrong argument which was I was making that it continuously kept toggling right that means I am not making a finite number of updates, right. I have to keep changing again and again and this process continues in a loop, right. So that is how I am going to define convergence that the perceptron learning algorithm updates a weight vector a finite number of times, right. It only needs to update it a finite number of times and it will reach a configuration such that now it is able to separate the P from the N, okay. That is what the proof of convergence means, right. So, uh, in other words, if we were going to pick up these vectors randomly from the set P and N cyclically as we were doing in the toy example, then a weight vector WT is found after a finite number of steps which will separate these two steps, uh, these two sets, right. So that is what we are trying to prove. So that is the definition of conversion. And does it make sense, right, okay. So proof is on the next slide and uh, it is it's going to take me around 5 to 10 minutes to prove it. So just uh, uh, stay focused, right. So here is a few setup, right. So I am going to, before I go to the actual proof, I am going to make a setup so that it becomes easier for us to prove it, right. So the first thing that I am going to say is that if there is a point which belongs in negative set, then the negative of that point belongs in the positive set, right. And that is very clear because if the point belongs in the negative set, then W transpose X is less than 0, but then W transpose minus X would be greater than or equal to 0, right. So if I take the negative of the point, I can just put it in the positive set. So instead of considering these two different things P and N, I am just going to consider one P prime which is a union of P and all the N points negated, okay. Is the setup clear? If this is a setup, then what is the condition that I need to ensure for every point in P dash? W transpose P should be greater than or equal to 0, right. So I do not care about the negative case, I have just made everything positive now. And it is, I am not doing anything wrong here, right, just a simple trick, okay. And now this is how the algorithm will look in this setup. These are the inputs with label 1, inputs with label 0, N minus contains the negation of all the points in N and P prime is a union of these. Now again I start by initializing W randomly, while convergence I will do something. I will pick a random P from P prime. Now what is the if condition? Less than 0. Do I need the other if condition? No, right, because everything is now positive, okay. And the other small thing that I am going to do is, I am going to normalize P, okay. So that again does not mean, because we are talking in terms of angles and I am not changing the direction of the vector, I am just shrinking it, right. So I am just, uh, or maybe scaling it also. I am just uh, making it unit norm. So that does not change anything, right. So it is still, everything still holds, okay. 
and in particular you can see here right. So, if this condition was true this condition will also be true ok. So, so far just I am done some simple tricks to make things easier for me later on. So, now p has been normalized. Now, remember that this data is linearly separable that is what we started the proposition with. If p and n are linearly separable then the perceptron learning algorithm will converge right. So, now if p and n are linearly separable irrespective of whether we have the perceptron learning algorithm or not what do we know that there exists a there exists a w star which is the solution vector right. There exists at least one w star which is the solution vector right such that it will separate the p points from the n points. So, this vector which we do not know, but we just know that it exists. So, we can refer to it. So, we will call this w star ok fine. Now, we start the proof. So, w star is some optimal solution which we know exists, but we do not know what it is right. Now, suppose you are at time step t. So, remember that this algorithm is going on while convergence. So, you have time step 1, 2, 3 you are picking up points. So, you are at a time step t at which you pick up a random point p i and you find that the condition is actually violated. So, this should actually be less than 0 right. You find that the condition is violated. So, now what will you have to do? w is equal to w is 1. So, I will just call it the new w w t plus 1 is equal to the old w plus p i ok. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to consider the angle beta between w star and w t plus 1. I do not know what w star is, but we can still assume it exists and make some uh, calculations based on that right. So, what is the angle between w star and w t plus 1? It is beta and what is the cos of that angle? This and remember that we do not have w star here because we had assumed that it is the normalized vector right. So, we do not need that bit ok. Uh, this is actually equal to 1 ok. So, now if I just take the numerator w star in uh, dot product w t plus pi. Now, I am going to expand w t as w t plus pi fair so that is exactly what I did on the previous uh, step is it ok fine. Now, now what is pi actually? It is so what you had is you had these p 1, p 2, p 3 my handwriting is really horrible and up to p n right right. So, I have just picked one of these p i's ok. Now, what I am going to define is now suppose this is my these are my p i's right. So, these are all the vectors that I have. Now, suppose I have this w star suppose this was the w star that I am interested in. Now, for each of these I could compute w star p 1, w star p 2 and so on up to w star p n right and I could sort them. Now, what I am doing is that for whichever of these points w star p i is the minimum ok. I am going to call that value as delta. Suppose w star p 1 is the smallest quantity out of w star p 1, w star p 2, w star p n right and I am calling that quantity delta ok. So, I have this quantity here and my delta is the minimum of all the possible values that it can take. It can take w star p 1, p 2 up to p n. So, delta is the minimum quantity. So, here I have an equality ok. Now, are you ok with this? This is the minimum quantity right. So, any p i that I put in here it is always going to be greater than or worst case equal to delta fair ok fine. Now, again this w 2 itself I could write it as w t minus 1 plus p j because that also would have come up from some update in the previous step ok. Again this is there which I could call it as delta and still retain the greater than equal to here ok fine. So, let us see where are we heading with this right. Now, notice that we do not make a correction at every time step. When I was running the toy algorithm I was not making a correction at every time step. We were only making a correction at those time steps for which the uh, condition was violated. So, now if I am at tth time step maybe I have made only k which is less than or equal to t corrections. At max I would have made t corrections, but it could have been less than that also ok. So, now every time we make a correction we are adding a value delta to this right. So, at the time step t what would happen? I had started off from w naught. I have reached time step t and I have made a case that 
I have not made t updates, I have made k less than or equal to t updates, right. So, how many deltas would get added? k delta. So, I could say that with respect to w naught where I had started from, this is what this quantity is, okay. Is that fine? Anyone has a problem with this? Okay. So, so far what have we shown, right? We started with this, this condition was true, again not less than or equal to and hence we made the correction, right? This was the point that we picked up at the tth step and hence we made that correction. And we also showed that the numerator is actually greater than or equal to this quantity, right? We showed it by induction, fine. Now, let us look at the denominator and in particular let us look at the denominator squared, okay. Is this step okay? This is actually W t plus 1 dot product W t plus 1, but W t plus 1 can be written as W t plus p i. Is this okay? This bracket needs to disappear, right? Is that okay? Fine. Now, what is, uh, what is this quantity? Uh, no. that is less than or equal to 0. So, now can you guess what is the next thing that I am going to write, right? It is correct. Yeah, it is a negative quantity, yeah, yeah. So, that is going to be less than or equal to this, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, that is fine. And what about uh, P i square or this term? Huh? Uh, because this is less than, right? That is why? Yeah, correct, okay. Is this fine? Okay. Now, what is p i square? 1, okay. Now, can you guess what I am going to do by induction? K, okay. That is okay. Uh, so, what is w t square again? Just as W t plus 1 square was W t square plus 1, W t square is going to be W t minus 1 square plus 1, right. And how many such 1s will get added? K of those, right, starting from W naught, okay. So, what have we shown? The numerator is greater than or equal to this, the denominator is less than this, okay. Now, if I put them together, I actually get that cos beta is going to be greater than or equal to the numerator over the denominator, okay. Now, what is this quantity proportional to? K, K square, K cube, square root of K, K by 2, square root of K, right. You have, I mean roughly speaking, you have a K here, you have a square root of K here. So, I could roughly speaking say that it is proportional to square root of k. So, as k grows, what will happen to cos beta? It will grow and that is fine, right? It can keep growing only until 1, right? So, cos beta is going to be proportional to k. What is k? The number of updates that you make. Now, if I were to take that degenerate case which you guys were hinting at, where that it will keep changing again and again. What will happen to k? It will keep going to infinity. Can that happen? No, because cos beta will blow up, right? And that is not allowed. So, k has to be finite, so that cos beta stays within its limits, right? Hence, are we done? How many of you think we are done? How many of you are satisfied that we are done? It is not a trick question. So, we are done. Please, we are done. Okay. So, yeah. So, this says that we can only have a finite number of such k updates that we make and after that the algorithm will converge. Is that okay? So, we have a proof of convergence, okay. Now, coming back to our questions, this is where we had started at one point. What about non-Villian inputs? So, perceptron allows that, right? We took IMDB rating and critics rating as an input. Do we always need to hand code the threshold? We now have perceptron learning algorithm. Are all inputs equal? No. We now assign weights to input. What about functions which are not linearly separable? We still do not know, right? So, that is where we are headed now, okay.
not possible with a single perceptron, but we'll see how to handle this. Okay, so far the story is clear to everyone. Okay, so we'll end this module here. Mm -hmm.